Can everyone see that all right? Okay, great. Awesome. Great, so we're go ahead and get started in like two minutes. I don't wanna delay us too much, but I just wanna give space for the other folks to join. How's everybody's weekend so far? I'll take that as good. <laughs> I can jump in and say thanks to everyone for joining us on a Sunday. Um, I, yeah, appreciate everyone taking some time out of their weekends to, to be here today. Um, and also appreciate folks being flexible. I actually am um, based in Europe, so. I'm a little bit, I'm a few hours ahead of, I expect most of you. So um, I appreciate sort of everyone making the time on a Sunday to be here. Um, so, so I could join as well. An evening on a week day would have been a little challenging for me. So it's nice to be here with you all today. Amazing. Um, okay, I think we can go ahead and get started. It doesn't look like anyone else is jumping in. Um, so hello everybody yes as angelica said thank you guys so much for being here on a sunday it really means a lot um we are where there be dragons as you guys know and this webinar is really designed so that you guys can learn more about senegal specific programs um and if you leave this and you're like eh, senegal's not for me but dragons is please we have a bunch coming up um they cover every region that we go to and we'll be meeting with program directors like Angelica and with outreach coordinators like myself. Um, so you guys can ask all of your questions and learn about specific programs. And the awesome news for Senegal is that there's still tons of space for this summer and for the upcoming fall semester. Um, so super excited to share more information with you guys. And Angelica will do some introductions in a minute, but we'll be taking the brunt of the webinar and explaining since she's our Senegal program director. Um, and then logistical questions about like dragons applications will be directed to me just so you guys kind of know how we divide these meetings. Um, Angelica, if you wanna take it away. Um, sure, so I can start us off by um, telling a little bit um, the story of our name, um, so the name Where There Be Dragons. Um, the, the sort of story or the sort of origin story of the name is that map makers once do, drew dragons on maps to represent unknown lands. Um, so today going Where There Be Dragons um, means sort of going beyond what's known to you um, and trying to engage the unfamiliar and discovering new parts of, of ourselves in the world. Um, so what we sort of try and, and cultivate in our, our programming is that sort of like outward exploration and inward exploration as well. Um, so that's kind of a, a guiding ethos um, in, in our programs. Um, and I can talk a little bit more about what that means for the Senegal program specifically um, a little bit later on. Yeah, so this will be presented by myself and Angelica, and I'll let her introduce herself, but I'm Sammy, I use she, her pronouns, and I am an outreach coordinator for Dragon, so essentially doing marketing and recruitment and helping students find programs um, that are right for them. Um, and I am also a Dragon's alumni. I did a program in Indonesia back in 2017, um, so very familiar with the workings of the program. And my name is Angelica Calabrese. I'm again, the Senegal program director. Um, I also sort of manage one of our university partnership programs, um, but the bulk of my experience with Dragons has been in Senegal. So I started as a Dragons instructor um, in Senegal in 2016 and have led summer programs and semester programs um, in Senegal, as well as in Southeast Asia. Um, and I began sort of working as a, as the, um, our, one of our sort of bridge year program, program directors, our 
program director for one of our big university partnerships, as well as the Senegal program director um, in about a year and a half ago. Um, and as the Senegal program director, I work with our Senegal staff to sort of develop and run our programs on the ground. I work on itinerary development. Um, I do a lot of sort of staff training and working closely to sort of ensure that we are um, de delivering the best programs possible. So a bit about Dragons. Um, we've been in the industry for 30 plus years. We started back in 1993 when our founder, Chris Yeager, did a program abroad in China and he hated it. It was too curated. It wasn't giving him like the authentic immersion that he was looking for. So he rented a car and drove out into the middle of rural China and spent his semester exploring those landscapes and those peoples. And I just love that story because I think it speaks so perfectly to what we're aiming to do, which is really engage as closely as we can with what it means to live in these different places. Um, and since then, we've obviously evolved from just driving around in a car through rural China into these really robust, awesome programs with tons of like dragon specific framework. Um, we specialize in high school and college student group experiences. So all of our programs are gonna be 12 students, which I'll talk about in a moment. We also do, like Angelica was saying, partnership programs with schools and global education, but this, the high school and college experiences is really like the bulk of what makes up Dragons. Um, all of our summer programs are two, four, and six weeks long. Senegal is a four-week summer program that starts at the end of June and goes until the end of July, and these encompass high school and college students. And our three-month gap semesters are for students who are looking to take a year either between high school and college, or maybe during college, or they're just doing a semester abroad, they can get up to 16 college credits on a gap semester. So super awesome way to do like an experiential form of learning. And a lot of things really differentiate our programs from other programs. The first is this form of unfiltered travel that we're doing. So. We are never going to be going sightseeing or taking tour buses or private transportation. We really want to engage as closely as we can to the people and the places that we're experiencing. So we use this word unfiltered travel to explain the way that we move through these countries, which is really as close to what the locals do as possible. Um, we're having these really unique experiences with our homestay families, with our apprentice or independent study project teachers in our language learning, in the way that we engage in these local communities. All of our programs are custom crafted and one of a kind. So even if we've been going to the same communities in the same countries for decades, every year it's going to be slightly different. And this is because of our expert instructors. Our instructors are truly, truly experts in their fields. They have lived in the country that they're leading in. One of our instructors is always an in-country instructor. So for instance, they are Senegalese. Um, maybe the second has lived or worked or traveled extensively in Senegal before. And the third is like a general dragons instructor. So you're getting an immense amount of local fluency. Um, they really will craft the program a bit differently each year. And because our groups are so small, every program is always 12 students and three instructors. We can really craft the programs to what the students are interested in. So if we have a program going to Bolivia who's really interested in mining, right, like then we'll explore that theme more. Or if we have a program running in Senegal and the students are really interested in learning more about Islam or mysticism, then the instructors can incorporate that a bit more into the program. So we have these like really beautiful, flexible itineraries. Um, and the biggest difference, which is one of my personal favorites, is that all of our experiences are unplugged. Um, this means that we do not allow phones on our program. There's a few logistics that if you have questions about, we can answer at the end. But this really ensures that we are just being as present as possible everywhere that we go. We're not using our phones as crutches, um, you know, in times of like discomfort or escape. Um, and that we can just really level with everyone around us and, and be really present at where we're at. Um, a lot of people ask, like, who is a typical Dragon student? A Dragon student is someone who baseline is curious. Our students really want to learn more about the world. They really want to travel. They feel like there's something more out there. Um, so it really doesn't matter 
who you are or where you're from. We get international students. We get students based in the U.S., which is where we operate out of. We get students who have never left the country or maybe their state before. We get students who have like gone to many places. So really spans the radar of experience and identity. Um, and the baseline value is this sense of like curiosity of wanting to travel in a meaningful way. Um, and our students are just really incredible, really incredible people. Um, more logistics, if you guys have questions, we can hop back to after, but now I'm going to turn it over to Angelica so that we can get into the Senegal specific details. Great, thank you, Sammy. Um, yeah, so I will wanted to start us off with this photo of um, a baobab tree, a sort of classic of the Senegalese landscape. Um, and I think this photo is really representative of a lot of the sort of spaces and communities that we spend time with on the Senegal program. The baobab tree is this kind of matriarch of the Senegalese landscape. Um, and it's a tree with a lot of sort of cultural and spiritual significance um, in Senegal and is often a really important part of the Senegal program. Um, there are many times when we'll sort of sit or gather or under or around a baobab tree and it's really a space of gathering. And I think that this word gathering is a, is a beautiful way to think about sort of what we do at Dragons as sort of bringing, bringing people together. Um, gathering and um, learning sort of with and, and from one another. Um, so before we uh, are sort of as we continue, Sammy, we can go to the next slide. I'm going to walk us through some of our regional highlights. I wanted to first sort of orient us on the map. Um, you can see Senegal is over on the sort of uh, coast of West Africa. Um, it's a small country uh, sort of in the shape of a face. It has the Gambia sort of in the middle of it. Um, I don't think I have a, a more sort of zoomed in map of, um, of Senegal, but I think it's useful to just understand sort of where we are um, in the region where we are on the African continent um, as a way to sort of ground ourselves sort of in, in place. Um, and we can head to the next slide. Um, these are some of the sort of highlights of the Senegal program um, that I wanted to sort of point out before we delve in a little bit further. Um, the first is this idea of Taranga and the culture of hospitality. Um, sort of wherever you go in Senegal, you're invited to sit down for a cup of tea, to share. A lot of my colleagues um, say that the most important thing to them is really this idea of sharing. Um, of sort of being together um, and of sharing stories, of sharing time, um, of sort of learning how to be together in a different way. Um, I think one of the things that I always sort of think about is often we'll sort of lay out a big mat under a baobab tree or maybe a mango tree um, and sort of learn to like spend time together. I think it's it's kind of rare today um, that we take the time to simply to sort of disconnect from everything that's sort of happening rapidly in the world around us and just be with one another. Um, and I think this idea of Taranga and of sort of slowing down is one of the things that Senegal really offers us, um, the opportunity to sort of really practice. Um, there are three main languages that we'll sort of engage with in Senegal that Dragon's programs engage with. There are many, many, many more languages that are spoken in Senegal, um, but students will primarily be studying um, Wolof, French, and a little bit of Pular. So Wolof is the language that's spoken around Dakar. Um, French is the sort of former colonial language that's kind of a, a lingua franca today. Um, and Pular is a language that's spoken in the south of Senegal. Um, so we'll have the opportunity, students will have the opportunity to study all of those languages and sort of practice communicating in those languages. Um, we'll pass through many different landscapes. So urban centers, rural drylands, southern hills, agricultural countryside. There's a really rich diversity of landscapes that we'll move through on the Senegal program and a lot of different themes, which we'll talk about more a little bit later. But I wanted to highlight a few of them here. 
Um, so in the Senegal program, there's a big focus on art and music, um, religious, religion and spirituality and the study of Islam, um, and about climate change and development and desertification and a lot of the environment, environmental issues that communities are, fa are facing in Senegal. Um, so these are sort of some of the landscapes that, that we might see and pass through. Um, this is a photo of San Luis, which is the former capital city, um, the sort of like West African, um, like French colonial capital. Now the contemporary capital is Dakar, um, but there's a culture of sort of fishing and sea fishing. So we'll often pass by these like big um, beaches full of these fishing boats. Um, that's a really characteristic sort of aspect of um, what we'll sort of move through in Senegal. And you can go to the next slide. And this is again, another baobab tree and sort of this idea of gathering under a baobab tree. This is um, an agricultural community that we've worked with in the past that has this sort of sacred tree close to it. Um, and a lot of communities have these sacred baobab trees close to them are, are sort of occupying a, an important space in their, in their culture. And we have the opportunity to learn more about that when, you're in, when we're in Senegal. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about, before I sort of jump into some um, more specifics about the program, I wanted to talk about Dragon's course progression. Um, so one thing that's really unique about Dragon's programming um, is this course progression. So on all of our courses, on four-week summer co courses, on three-week gap semester courses, um, we move through what's called a course progression. So it begins with a really intentional orientation phase where we're really thinking about um, learning about one another um, and learning about Senegal. So building some of the sort of beginning to build some of the basic skills that'll help us um, move through, uh, sort of move through our time together, move through Senegal together um, from orientation. And it's, it's a really sort of like community focused time um, and we think it's really important to sort of build those skills early on so we can then sort of expand outwards over the course of the month. Um, so after the orientation, we move into that skill building phase. So we'll have some more language classes, our first short homestay, possibly a small trek. Um, and it's a phase of the program where, again, we're, we're really focusing on language acquisition, sort of understanding the culture, understanding how we can sort of successfully um, get by um, in this new place. And then we move into the practicing phase, which is usually a phase where we have longer homestays. Usually in Senegal, our longest homestays will be in rural communities. Um, this photo is actually from one of the rural communities where we do our longer homestay. It's a place called Tamanto Samba in the south of Senegal. Um, and I think there are a few other photos of Tamanto Samba that you'll see throughout this presentation as well. Um, and that's usually, again, we'll continue to study the language and you have the opportunity, students have the opportunity to do these independent study projects. Um, it's usually a really sort of meaningful time of the program where students begin to experience some independence um, and begin to um, sort of have, build deeper connections with homestay families or with um, independent study project mentors. Um, and then near the end of the program, we move, move towards this expedition phase. So students have the opportunity to take on more um, specific leadership roles and planning uh, activities and possibly planning, um, you know, three to four days of, of travel, three to four days of an itinerary, um, which is a really cool, again, opportunity for students to take on leadership roles and to really practice those skills that they've been building over the course of the month. And then the program closes with something with what, what we call transference, which is a kind of moment of reflection where we offer students the opportunity to really think about what this um, experience has meant for them and how to take it home. Um, how do we sort of transfer all that we've learned um, back to our various different sort of homes and places and, and carry this experience forward. Um, so that's kind of the arc of um, all of our programs as well as the Senegal program. Um, the other sort of essential part of Dragon's programs in general are what we call program components. Um, so Dragon's has nine program components that all of our programs are structured around. Um, and in the next few, few slides, I'm gonna be talking through 
um, some of the most important program components for the Senegal program. This is again, another photo from Timanto Samba where we do those rural homestays. Um, usually at the end of the program, we'll have a big community party where there's often a lot of dancing and music. So this is a photo from um, one of those sort of final homestay festivities. Um, one of a, a big aspect of the Senegal program is um, what we refer to as rugged and responsible travel. Um, so we're always taking um, sort of low impact uh, options with where we stay in terms of accommodations, the kind of transportation we use. We're not traveling in big tour buses. We're trying to travel in um, the kinds of vehicles and accommodations, the kinds of vehicles that local people travel in um, and accommodations that are almost always owned and run by community members um, that are sort of low impact, that are sustainable, that are responsible, that are sort of giving back to their communities and engaged in their communities. Um, sometimes, again, we'll take buses, sometimes we walk. So I'll talk a little bit about the trekking portion, um, but there's a really cool trekking portion of um, both the summer and the semester programs in Southern Senegal. So on the right, there's a photo of that. Um, one of those walks, like village to village walks. Um, uh, so rugged and responsible travel is a big part of the Senegal program. And really it's a, it's a pretty, like I would say that it's a pretty, um, again, as Sammy was saying, unfiltered program, like a, a really, um, a program that challenges students to really push outside their comfort zone. And um, uh, sometimes we like to say, get comfortable being uncomfortable, right? So to sort of push your limits of um, getting used to, you know, a cold shower and often a bucket shower, um, and um, really like eating local food, um, trying all of the local dishes. So we're really sort of trying to, um, you know, live and travel as Senegalese people live and travel around their country. Um, a second big part of the Senegal program is homestays. Um, so typically on the summer program and the semester program, we'll have two homestays. One is an urban homestay, um, usually in a city called Chez, which is in the center of Senegal, about an hour and a half outside of Dakar. And then usually there's a longer homestay in the community of Tamanto Samba, which is in the south of Senegal. It's a rural agricultural community in the south of Senegal. Um, and actually the community that one of our Senegal instructors was born in. So it's always a really sort of amazing opportunity to travel to um, Tamanto with Samba um, and to sort of hear his stories of that place when he was growing up there. Um, homestays are also a really wonderful opportunity to sort of build relationships. So as I was saying at the beginning, one of the things that, um, you know, one of these words that I like to use to describe our programming is gathering, sort of coming together, building relationships. And homestays are one of the big places where that happens. There are lots of opportunities to cook with homestay families, to share meals together. Um, typically in uh, the sort of homestay phase of the program, you'll be eating all three meals with your homestay family. So you would be eating breakfast with them and usually um, spending coming to the program house in the morning for some sessions and activities, language classes, going back to your homestay family for, le for lunch, and then returning to the program in the afternoon for usually a guest speaker or maybe those independent study projects. Um, but it's an opportunity to, to sort of really have that full experience of living with a family. Often a lot of the homestay families have children, which are really fun sort of to connect with and um, sometimes, you know, I know that students always love sort of soccer games with homestay siblings or cooking with the homestay mom. Um, so homestays are a really big and I think really meaningful part of um, programming in Senegal. You can go to the next slide. I wanted to talk a little bit about Senegalese food, um, the food that you'll sort of have with your homestay family. So most food in Senegal is eating is eaten out of a shared bowl. So as you can see on the right, you'll have a big shared bowl. It's actually one of my sort of favorite parts of Senegal. You have a big shared bowl and um, people will eat from this shared bowl. You'll kind of gather around the shared bowl. And it's a really beautiful way to, um, I think, to sort of spend time with other people and to sort of share um, 
what eating out of a shared bowl sort of challenges you to do is to sort of observe other people and and be generous, right? So there's often someone in the center who will be um, sharing food out from the center. And it's a really wonderful, um, I think a, a really meaningful way to sort of build connections. There's a lot of fish in Senegal. You can see on the left, there's a lot of fish. There's a lot of, um, this is our, the traditional sort of um, rice with fish, which is called also called chabujen. Um, as well as other dishes with, um, you know, meat, there are vegetarian dishes, dishes with beans. Um, but I wanted to sort of give a little glimpse into a classic Senegalese meal. Usually the largest meal of the day is lunch. So sometimes it takes a little bit of, a little bit of getting used to that largest meal of the day being lunch, but it's always a, a really wonderful time for families and communities to gather together. Um, another sort of essential program component in Senegal is language study, as I was mentioning. So there are three main languages that students will study on the Senegal program. Um, that's French, Wolof, and Pular. Um, and I think it's a really cool opportunity to study those different languages. Usually there's a little bit more of a focus on um, Wolof, sometimes students come in with French um, background and experience and they're excited to practice their French language skills. Um, so we'll usually sort of um, adjust based on student interest and student excitement. And sometimes there are opportunities for um, sort of smaller group tutoring for students who might be more advanced with French language um, or for students who are more excited and interested to study Wolof or to study French. Um, a lot of the language learning that we do happens sort of in the field. Um, so this is a pretty like classic um, classroom space, I would say, um, which is that we lay a spread out a big mat and we, um, you know, tape some big sheets of paper up on the wall and make a really um, make a classroom out of whatever space that we're in. Sometimes we're using teaching off of a tree or sometimes we're teaching off the wall of a, um, you know, of a space that we're staying in. Um, but we're always really creative and sort of like using our spaces and coming together to sort of learn um, to learn in, um, in community. Um, these are a few photos of um, various sort of homestay families. So I was thinking as I was putting these slides together um, that the language study and the homestay family components really work really well together. So the language study is really an essential part of sort of making the most of these homestay family connections. Um, and again, coming back to this idea of gathering of relationship building, um, we see that sort of language study and homestays um, as really working hand in hand to allow students on the Senegal program the opportunity to really connect um, with homestay moms, homestay sisters, homestay brothers, um, and to sort of build relationships, um, to build relationships, to build friendships that we hope um, sort of last long beyond the four weeks that you'll spend in Senegal. I know I have a lot of students who, um, you know, still call their homestay moms and homestay brothers and sisters sort of months and, and years later. And I hear sort of these kinds of stories from um, our community members in Senegal all the time as well, um, that their past students still call them and are still in touch with them. And I think that's always really, really beautiful um, to hear. Um, another important part of the Senegal program are um, independent study projects. So um, independent study projects or ISPs are an opportunity for students to um, choose a really specific sort of topic or um, art practice or skill that they want to study. Um, and you have the opportunity to, to work with an individual mentor. Um, you know, one to two times a week or possibly even, you know, more often if it's a shorter program um, to really develop that skill. Um, it's a really unique part of Dragon's programs in general. And I think a really cool part of the Senegal program in particular, because there are really a lot of different um, ways and directions that you could take independent study projects. Um, this photo is um, uh, one of our sort of classic independent study projects, which is studying um, the djembe. Um, West African drumming. This is Mamadou, who's a, a, a drumming teacher that we've worked with for many, many years. He's amazing. Um, and he is an incredible drumming teacher. Um, so a lot of students are often excited to study, um, to study drumming with Mamadou, um, usually when we're, when we're in the south of Senegal. You can go to the next photo. Mamadou also plays the Kora. So you can also, students will also 
often choose to study Cora with Mamadou. So the Cora is this instrument that you see here, um, which is a gourd on the bottom. It's a string instrument that just has an absolutely beautiful sound. Um, so there's the opportunity to study djembe or the opportunity to study the Cora, um, or to study sort of singing or music and in general. Um, there are a lot of different arts that you could study in Senegal as an independent study project. I can go to the next slide. Um, as I wanted to highlight some of the other options as well, tailoring is also an option. A lot of students are often really excited to study tailoring um, and to have the opportunity to practice sort of making, making their own clothes or trying their hand at mending clothes. Um, so this is a photo of a student doing a tailoring ISP. Um, students also have the opportunity to study something like tea culture. Um, so the photo on the right is of a student making a taya. A taya is a traditional Senegal, or, you know, it's actually a Chinese green tea um, that has been given a Senegalese spin to it. So it's typically prepared with mint um, and is very sweet and is made in multiple rounds. And there's a lot of, it, it holds a really sort of large and important place in, in Senegalese culture um, to sort of spend time with someone over um, a pot of ataya or sort of while having a pot of ataya while preparing a pot of ataya. So students often get really excited and interested in um, ataya culture and tea culture and ataya is often a, another popular um, independent study project. Um, but students can also do more sort of research-based projects too. Um, and I can come back to that when we talk a little bit more about the focus of inquiry and some of the sort of themes and topics that come up in Senegal. Those are some of the more hands-on projects. Another sort of really important program component in Senegal is um, religion and spirituality. Um, so students, um, Senegal is around 95% Muslim and 5% Christian. Um, so uh, learning about Islam, learning about Sufism, learning about mysticism is often a really big part of the um, Senegal program as well. Students often have the chance to um, travel to some of the largest mosques in the country, um, as well as to travel, to travel to some larger or to some smaller communities that practice um, other kinds of sort of Sufi spirituality and um, sort of Sufi mystic practices, um, religious practices and spiritual practices. Um, so there's, I think, this sort of opportunity to explore religion and spirituality to understand and sort of learn about Islam is um, often a really meaningful part of the program for students as well. Um, and finally, there's a, actually, I think I have, I have a few more program components to get to, but I'll, um, social and environmental justice is often, is also quite a big part of the Senegal program. Um, specifically, as I mentioned earlier, we delve into themes around climate change. We delve into themes around migration, um, into questions about, um, sort of uh, questions of development as well. So one of the communities that we often do homestays in, um, there is a project to build a, a large oil rig sort of right off the coast in front of the coast of the, uh, it's a community, a, a coastal community, a fishing community. And there's a, a large sort of international project to build an oil rig off the coast, which would have all of these impacts on the community's lives and livelihood and the fishing that these um, community members have historically lived off of. Um, so thinking about what are the sort of like implications of um, that kind of project on the sort of day-to-day -day, day lives of the people who are most affected by it. Um, we're also, there are communities that are affected by rising sea levels, um, uh, communities that have been affected by um, salination of the soil. So we're often sort of in conversation with community members, with guest speakers about um, climate change development, um, economics, migration, and how all of these topics intersect in really sort of thorny, thorny ways. So often we're trying to un untangle those together and, and really think about, um, you know, what to, how to sort of understand um, what we are seeing um, and the struggles that communities face in Senegal. 
We also often have the opportunity to do some hands-on work with these communities. So sometimes that looks like um, here students were weeding. This is a sort of typical um, Senegalese uh, tool to sort of cut grasses and, and weed um, herbs and fields. Um, we've also planted mangroves. We've had the opportunity to sort of help communities who were building compost, um, who are composting and sort of carrying out composting projects. So there are all kinds of opportunities to sort of have some hands-on um, chances to, to work with, sometimes it's women, women's cooperatives, women's cooperatives that are, um, you know, canning fruits or, or making jams, um, transforming. Um, there are a couple of projects that we've connected with in the past that are um, coastal projects that do sort of transformation of oysters and preservation of oysters and um, of sort of seafood. So lots of interesting opportunities to connect with really, really exciting um, sort of community development projects. Um, and finally, we have the opportunity to, to do a little bit of trekking and wilderness exploration. So this usually happens in the south of Senegal. Um, it's a, it'll usually be three to four days in this sort of beautiful region of the country. Um, it's kind of the most green region. A lot of Senegal is um, the Sahel, um, so just south of the Sahara, um, as you saw in some of the early, earlier photos, the sort of um, dry lens. Um, but in the south of Senegal, there are these kind of lush rolling hills. Um, and we often have the opportunity to do a sort of village to village trek um, in the south of, of Senegal and the opportunity to explore um, these really, really unique and beautiful landscapes. Um, and to um, do a little bit of, of trekking and backpacking. So it's often a great opportunity for students too, to sort of learn how to, um, you know, prep for a village to village trek and carry, you know, prep a backpack, pack a backpack, hike together. Um, we'll, um, we're usually eating meals, like eating dinners and breakfasts in the communities that we stay in, but we'll sort of pack lunches and eat lunch on the road um, during that hike. and. We have the opportunity to modify it too. So um, if some of the days are a little long for some students, we can shorten them or do day hikes instead. We have the opportunity to modify it, um, but it's a pretty unique way to explore the landscape and to learn about really interesting projects as well. Um, there's the Jane Goodall Institute for Chimpanzee Studies um, in this area of the country. And we will we'll usually visit that um, center and learn a little bit about their work in chimpanzee conservation um, and some of the sort of um, challenges and opportunities that communities have in this in this region of the country. Um, so those are the sort of main program components. And I just put this little slide in the end here, which is that um, Senegal is a great place to learn about legacies of French colonial history. Um, so that's something that I think permeates all of the um, other things that we're looking at and, and thinking about, right, is sort of like what are, what have been the impacts of colonialism on this place and um, how, how does the development that we see today, how is it connected to that? Um, there are really interesting conversations going on today about re the relationship to France, actually, um, and um, what sort of Senegalese um, development will look like in the future in relation to France, in relation to Europe, or in relation to other sort of West African nations. Um, it's also a great place to learn more about climate change and community development, as I was saying. Um, lots of really interesting projects that we're connecting to and learning about and people that we're hearing from. Um, one of my favorite things to explore in Senegal is really this uh, traditional and contemporary music and art scene. So as I was saying, there are opportunities to learn traditional sort of instruments and learn about traditional music, djembe, kora, but there's also a really, really vibrant contemporary art scene. Um, and we'll often have often have the opportunities to connect with contemporary artists, um, contemporary musicians. One of our um one of our Senegalese instructors is um one of the sort of like up and coming female, young female rappers in Senegal. And she's a really, really cool um, a sort of mentor to students, has an amazing life story, is really passionate about what she does, um, and brings all of that to, um, you know, the students that she works with. Um, so we work with sort of people from all different 
walks of, of life. And um, uh, I think like Tusa to, you know, brings, brings that, I think, it's cool when I when I think about our sort of instructor community in Senegal that we have Mamadou Djembe, who I was, there were some photos of him earlier, who teaches sort of kora and drumming and these traditional um, instruments, as well as Tusa, who is like thinking about music very differently. Um, but for both of them, it's a way to sort of tell a story. It's a way to create a connection. It's a way to um, sort of express themselves and and say something about what it means to be Senegalese today, um, which I think is a big part of um, what we, you know, are trying to connect to and understand when we're in Senegal together. Um, and finally, yeah, uh, I can talk a little bit about staying healthy in Senegal. Um, so we'll, we'll cover all of this when we're in country together, um, but I just, you know, we'll talk about GI health, we'll talk about um, sort of eating um, foods that are cooked, um, as in it's like usually easy, it's usually better to avoid um, like raw foods, to avoid lettuce, to avoid sort of foods that you can't peel, but we'll go all over all of that in country. Um, we do advise all students to go see a travel doctor before traveling. Most students take malaria prophylaxis like malarone, um, students are asked to sleep under mosquito nets, um, and there are usually some inoculations to, that are recommended before traveling to Senegal. So those typhoid, hepatitis, yellow fever, and rabies, those are all um, conversations that really you can have with your travel doctor, um, but we think it's important to, you know, just touch on briefly um, in this sort of preparation phase. Um, uh, I guess I'll talk about, yeah, I'll talk about running recommended gear quickly. I did want to say briefly that the visa is relatively simple for Senegal as well. Um, most um, students coming from the U.S. can get a visa on arrival. Um, so it's that's usually a pretty simple process. There is some recommended gear. Um, one sort of important piece of recommended gear is this, a standalone bug hut. So there are some photos of what that looks like here, the standalone bug hut. Um, we also have a, a pretty thorough packing list in our course prep manual, which you would get all of that um, once you sign up. Um, and then some water pur purification is always a good idea. Um, so there are a couple of different options that you can use for water, water purification. Um, we do always provide um, bottled water, purified water um, on course, you'll almost you always have access to it, um, but it's nice to you know have something like a life straw or aqua mira, just in case you need it. Um, and again, I just wanted to sort of close with this um, photo of this sort of final homestay party that we have in, in the south of Senegal um, and this idea of gathering and coming together and relationship building. I do think that's really what's at the heart of the Senegal program and um, the connections at the heart of the Senegal program is the connections that we're able to make with people in these places and the sort of um, understanding and empathy that we're able to build. Um, so I think that's really the strength of this program and the strength of Dragon's programs in, in general is, is um, cultivating that empathy and cultivating that human connection. I think with this, I'll pass it back to Sammy. This is as you may see a photo of me <laughs> learning the Quran in Senegal. So, um, but it has circulated amongst dragons <laughs> uh, materials for a while now, but it's a good one. I'm handing it back to you, Sammy. Thanks. Thanks, Angelica. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so just to hop back to some of the logistics, we've gotten a really beautiful overview of what a program looks like. And I think sometimes it begs the question, like, why is this kind of travel important? And like, why are we providing these experiences? Um, so just a few student outcomes, personal growth, um, like Angelica mentioned, becoming comfortable with the uncomfortable, really learning about yourself and showing up as yourself when you're in a place you don't know and with people you don't know um, and learning about like, oh, who is Sammy and what does she need and, and what is she good at and what does she need to work at? Um, Cultural competency is obviously huge, just 
cross-cultural understanding and communication building skills, um, really an understanding for the many, many different ways there are to live on this planet and approaching that from like a really groundwork understanding basis and, and not with judgment, um, leadership, right. We're like working in these small groups and we're traveling through like a pretty challenging semester or summer together. And so learning how we all play a role in these group dynamics and, and where our strong suits are. And then just really eye-opening experiences, um, with all of the challenges and all of the fun that comes with the dragons program. Students are experiencing things that they've never done before. Um, they're interacting with people and with places that they might not have otherwise had the opportunity to without this like real sense of local knowledge that our instructors bring. Um, and we just really see these transform students personally, professionally. They have a better sense of what they wanna do in the world and what their strong suits are, maybe what they wanna do when they're older. Um, the benefits are, are really insurmountable. Um, so if you guys have any questions, we're going to open it up now. I believe that there is one more slide that says how to apply. So I'm just going to skip to this for a second. Um, all of our programs have rolling admission. So we will keep a program open until it fills. Again, that's 12 spaces. Um, we have a good amount of space for Senegal this summer and for next semester. So it's all good, but we will take applications until the program fills. Um, so there's no deadline, but it's always better to apply earlier so that everything is set. Um, we have a few program prep materials that we'll send out to students and families once they're registered for a program. An application includes a Dragon's application, which should take no longer than like 20 to 30 minutes. It's just a chance for us to get to know you. You do not need to write essay length answers and a deposit. Um, the deposit is what secures your spot on a program, but if you're interested in financial aid, which we now have two forms of, you do not submit a deposit, you submit the financial aid application form instead. Um, and I'm happy to chat through more financial aid specific questions if anyone has them. And I believe that is the last slide. So I am going to open it up to questions. I'm actually gonna stop sharing just so I can see everyone. Um, and if anyone has a question, now is the time. And if there are none, that's also totally fine. Yes, Beth. Hi, um, I'm here with Nate and uh, Nate would be the traveling student. What is the difference in your mind between the four week summer experience and the longer semester experience? Hmm. Wow. That's a great question. Um, just I can talk go yeah, yeah go for it if I you want to say that they are the same program. It's the same structured program. One is just longer. Um, so I just want to kind of like reiterate, like you'll be experiencing similar things on both programs. But yeah, so, so it's not like you travel to additional regions or, but just every, all the components are longer. So. I can speak a little to the specifics of, of Senegal. Um, mm -hmm. It'll, and it'll look different from country to country um, or from, you know, program to program. The West Africa semester program is going to have certainly, um, it, it'll have longer home stays. So actually, whereas in the summer program, the longer home stay is in the um, South in a rural area in the semester program, Sometimes we'll spend a longer time in the urban homestay in Chez, and that gives us an opportunity to visit a lot of different NGOs in the region, um, to take all different kinds of sort of like dance classes and music classes when we're in Chez, um, and to sort of students get this really cool sort of opportunity to, you know, have a kind of independent life in, in the city, um, which is really, I think, a, a cool opportunity for students in some place that uh, a part of the experience that students really love. Um, the semester program will likely usually does go to a few places that the sum summer program won't always get a chance to go to. Um, so for example, the summer program typically won't go to the city of San Luis in the north um, because Senegal is a relatively small country, but it takes a long time to get from place to place. Um, so there are some places that sometimes the semester program will go to that the summer program won't. Um, historically, the semester program has um, 
gone to Guinea, has actually crossed over in the border to Guinea and has done some homestays in Guinea. I'm not sure if that um, is sort of in the cards for this fall, um, but it has often been a big part of the semester program is two to three weeks of travel in Guinea and the sort of like Northern Guinea and the mountainous region of Northern Guinea, which is really beautiful. Um, but I'm not sure if we would be doing that this fall, um, but we have done it in the past. Um, so I think that, you know, it's a, it's a yes. And we'd be spending longer in, um, longer, a longer time in the homestays. And we would also be seeing a few places that we don't always hit on the summer programs. Right. Thank you. That's helpful. Mm -hmm. Anybody else with questions? Yeah, Ellie. Hi. Um, since we won't be allowed to kind of have our phones, are we allowed to bring like a digital camera with us? Okay. Yeah. I think you're on mute, Sammy, sorry. Nope, I definitely was on mute. Um, yes, definitely. We really encourage students to bring cameras or video cameras, things to capture. Some students bring, you know, cheaper little digital cameras. Some students are really into photography and they want to bring their equipment. Um, yeah, the, the reason we don't have phones is, is really just to not use them as a crutch and to be present. But all of the other fun things that phones have, like dictionaries or music or cameras, we encourage students to bring separately. Um, and there will be a packing list, a pretty comprehensive packing list that students will receive, which will tell you what to pack. And that includes all the fun stuff um, and also what not to pack. Um, so students will be really well prepped for that. But definitely bring a camera. You'll want to take pictures. Any other questions? Awesome. Well, if anything does come up, um, I will send out a follow-up email with myself and Angelica's contact information. Um, Angelica is definitely point person on all things Senegal and then I'm point person on all things like Dragons Logistics. So if you have any questions, please reach out, um, especially if you're interested in the summer. Oh yeah, Ellie, your hand is still raised. Yeah, I do have a question. So if you applied for the summer program, when do you hear back from them? Great question. So if you submit a deposit, um, you'll hear back within around two to three days of when to schedule an interview. Um, we require the deposit to move on to the interview, which is, again, really just to make sure you're a good fit for Dragons. We'll ask you some mental and physical health questions to make sure we can support you on a program. If you apply for financial aid, we'll be getting back to students around the end of March. Um, the reason that this takes a little bit longer um, is because we don't have unlimited funds for financial aid. So we need to wait for programs to kind of fill or get close to filling before we can divvy it all out. So I know it's very frustrating, but thank you for your patience. If you've submitted a summer application and you haven't heard back because you applied for financial aid, that is why. Um, so you'll be hearing back within around a month or so. And then they'll tell you how much um, financially they can offer you and then they'll move into the interview portion of the process. Awesome. Great. Um, well, thank you all so much for coming. We will circulate the recording um, and our information as well. And really excited for you all to hopefully join us on a program in Senegal, if not Senegal, somewhere else. Um, but just really incredible, special programs. So super happy that you all took time out of your weekend to join us and learn more about them. Yeah, thank you all so much for joining. And um, yeah, I hope you all are feeling excited about the Senegal program. Um, it's a program that I love really, really dearly and that I know students really thrive on. And um, yeah, I hope I hope that this has been sort of eye-opening for each of you and that you all are coming away from this feeling feeling excited. Um, and as Sammy said, feel free to reach out with any questions. Um, I'm definitely available um, to speak to any Senegal specific questions and um, would love to do so. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Thank everyone. You.